that is literally hours young. Mm -hmm. uh, we both discovered today that Rep has announced the Aries 2.0. And I think while there's a lot of excitement and anticipation at the, uh, the crowdsourced revisions, there's also some, some disgruntled Rep Aries V1 owners, especially right. those who bought one in the last couple of days. What do you know yeah. about that? Yeah, so I was I was scrolling through the comments and I saw yeah. several people. One that was like, you know, tag somebody. We just put ours together a week ago. You know, what do you think about this news? And somebody mentioning they just got one recently from the Rep showroom. And like, I could definitely understand the frustration. There were also people like, asking if there were if there was going to be some sort of like uh package or you know add on that they could add on to the 1.0 to make it uh more similar to the 2.0 like a retrofit then, kit yeah something yeah. like that sure um i don't know what the official stance is on that but uh i saw somebody subsequently commented rep confirmed there will no be no retrofit kit. So yeah, a lot of uh, excitement, but I would say about the same amount of frustration and disappointment. Uh, what do you know about it? You know, I, I don't know much. I think, let's see, I, 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 I shared the, the post today because I, I am personally uh, very interested in, in eventually bringing in a rack mounted functional trainer. We've talked about right. this before yeah. into, into my space. I also, when, when, when rep released the original Aries and Athena, um, I knew that based off of reps history, that there would eventually be a 2.0. And there right. were some things for me that I immediately identified as not being quite right for, for what, what I wanted to do with the functional trainer. So yeah, I kind of have this personal philosophy that investing in V1, uh, at least from a company like rep or maybe Titan, where you kind of know that a V2 is going to come and address a lot of those immediate pain points, whereas rogue might let it sit or just abandon the product altogether, the product line altogether. You never know that it's best to be patient. Right. And I was kind of forced into being patient because I don't really have the space right now to accommodate that. But I think that it's it's a lesson learned for a lot of people. I'll also say that at least in the recent history, Rep has done ha had a different approach to uh, new product releases, right? Like if you look at the Adonis, if you look at their recent uh, revisions to their benches, the 5200 and the 5000, which we got to preview those new releases at home gym con last year, they teased them out with like, not even renders like sketches, you know, uh -huh. like kind of like letting people know that something was coming. And what I'm curious is, is did they maybe see a dip in sales on the current uh, renditions of those products because they teased out the updates and that, influenced their approach to to what you know what they did today which was just to shock the home gym world by showing people a fully assembled prototype of the 2.0 of the it's the athena or was it the i always get the two confused the athena and the aries which one I think did they it's the aries it's the aries. aries yeah look at my yeah. notes it's the aries 2.0 that they released yeah. today um yeah, I mean, if I, it's tough because if I was a consumer, if I had just bought the Aries 1.0, I'd be pissed. I'd right. Be, I'd be hot. Um, you would just be like, hey, man, can I please return this and get the new one when it's ready? I mean, that I would refuse the shipment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Take it back. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so this thing takes a long time to put together. And I did specifically see one comment that said, oh, I just put this together, you know, or yeah. somebody tagged somebody like, we just put this together last week. That sucks. But big, but like when companies and every company does this, you know, occasionally, and, and you want a company to be responsive to feedback. Yeah. If something isn't perfect, you want them to improve it. I think the, and you pointed it out, like the big issue was not letting anyone know this sort of came as a surprise. Right. Um, 
I worked for Apple for about seven years and I grew accustomed to the set release schedule. So like iPhones come out at the same time every year, computers tend to come out around the same time every year. Right. Um, but in general, they tease them like a month before. So you have plenty of time, like people know, and then Apple has a pretty, or at least then, I don't know what the policy is now, but a pretty generous, like if you bought it within 30 days before the new one, We'll, sure. we'll swap you out. Um, sure. It's a lot harder to do that with equipment that weighs a thousand pounds or whatever that right. is shipped by freight cross country. Like, I don't know how you work that out, but it sucks. It sucks on both ends, man. And I don't know that there's an answer for it. I think rep is sort of in the midst of figuring out the best way to handle it. And I don't, yeah. I don't know what the best way is. I do know from personal experience and also from being really active in the discord and, and a, a lurker on the home gym, Facebook group, um, that rep historically has had phenomenal customer service, right? Um, their owner or one of the owners, Ryan is really active in the, the home gym discord. He answers questions. He has helped people with little parts and little issues that they've had kind of going the traditional customer service routes. So I think that historically their, their reputation precedes them. And mm -hmm. the hope should be that people they'll work with people, but this is, this is a big product, right? This isn't just a 500, $600 bench. This is a $3,000 complex piece of equipment. Um, so it will be really interesting to see where they go with this, um, getting back to like, how are they going to, how are they going to address this to, with the customers? Now, this is something that like, like I mentioned, historically rep has done a fantastic job with, with customer service and taking care of their people and going above and beyond to make sure that their customer is happy. One of the other kind of difficult things that at least that I perceive, especially when they're manufacturing out of China is that they can't, how many prototypes do we think that they can get, right? Like, or that they're buying ahead of the larger order that's right. coming on a, on a, on a carrier. And, right. you know, once that orders in, it's coming. Um, but I do know from some of the relationships that I have that they are, I think at least from the little bit of information that I do have, I think that they are trying to get prototypes in a handful of home gym users spaces so that mm -hmm. they can get feedback before they place that big order. And yeah. I think that that should hopefully help solve a lot of these problems going forward. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, I think if you like, if, if they had done that, maybe with the original Aries or Athena, a home gym owner is going to give wildly different feedback than their in-house engineers, right? Who's just kind of using the prototype in their already decked out, you know, a uh, company gym or whatever. So. I think I'm going to bet on rep in this scenario. I'm going to bet yeah. that they're going to, they're going to do it right something somehow. like they're not going to leave their customers out to dry because yeah. that, you know, that they, they've, they've done so much work to like build up their reputation with the home gym community. Yeah. yeah. They're going to do something. I don't know what they're going to do or what they can do. If I was somewhere in that organization, I would be like, somebody figure out how to retrofit this shit so we could like, you know, send these people an upgrade kit and make them happy. Okay. So I think, so let's talk about something else that kind of uh, grinds my gears in relation to the, the Aries 2.0 that dropped today. So sure. Anytime that a new product releases, especially from rep, uh, but not, not exclusive to rep, you will see the bigger content creators or I hate the word influencers, but influencers, influencers in our home gym space, if you will, are really quick to share a story with their affiliate link in the story, encouraging you, especially if you haven't already heard about it to click on that link and go check out the product. Now, right. for those who don't realize what's happening when they click on that link, their affiliate link is what's always in there. You are then caching their affiliate link in your browser, 
and that will typically hold for like 30 days or so. It depends on the system that the manufacturer or the company is using to host their affiliate program. But it kind of bothers me personally when these guys are doing that. They've never even tried the product. They're just capitalizing on the hype of this new product and people want to click on the link and learn more about it. But then, you know, let's say that, you know, next week they buy a couple plates, some leg rollers or something, that content creator, that influencer is getting the affiliate commissions for those sales. Yeah. It, it bothers me personally. I don't exactly know why, but it does. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I have thoughts, man. So like, I can see it from your perspective, like why that's annoying. And because that's annoying, you and I don't do that stuff because right. like it feels spammy. Have you ever been to like a pond where there are a lot of fish in the pond and you throw one piece of bread in the pond and then like 20 fish are like piling on top of each other trying to get that one tiny piece of bread? That's yeah. what it feels like. That's what the affiliate game is like with those of us who have affiliate accounts. Like it wasn't like this two years ago. Um, there weren't as many people in the game and there, you know, there weren't as many of the people having multiple affiliate accounts. And now it's like, everybody's a rep affiliate. Everybody's a rogue affiliate. Everybody's an everything affiliate. And so, yeah, like everybody's out to get that money before somebody else gets that money. And I, I know like as a content creator, it, it's a, it's tough dude. like the, the platforms don't pay very well. YouTube doesn't pay very well for the amount of work that it takes to make a video and put out mm. a video. Instagram only started paying recently. Um, prior to that, it was all free. So you're like putting in all this work and you, you're not getting compensated. You hope someday it'll all pay off, but you know, it's like trying to pay those bills, man. So, you know, people are going to do what they have to do to get that money, to keep making content. Um, and there are different strategies. There's, you know, Patreon there's, uh, I mean, I think what I do is a little bit different. What you do is a little bit different, but I mean, so I don't hate the players. I hate the game. That being said, Fair enough. Well said. That being okay. said, it still feels spammy and I don't like it either. Yeah. Yeah, I it I I it 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 bothers me. Um I think maybe because I think because the the people that are are doing that, you know, I think that the guys who are who are who are finding success doing this full time, which there's a few, um like probably probably count them on one hand um they have to to kind of hit every angle that they possibly can and do it in ways that feel like you said spammy i maybe i'm just sharing it so that people know i think it's it's important that you are you are giving credit to the content creator that you intend to right so maybe can i I'm jump sharing... in here real quick yeah you and I are technical people. Yeah. I understand what cash is when you go to a website and it caches, ah, but mm. like there may not be people who know that. So in, in layman's terms, like if my mom clicks on my affiliate link in Instagram and it yeah. takes my mom to the rogue website from that day until 30 days, if my mom purchases anything from rogue, I get that affiliate money. My mom can click on my link and then watch Gluck's video on his review of these awesome plates. And my mom says, I want to buy those plates. I'm going to go to Rogue's website and buy them because of Gluck's video. Right. I am the one who gets that sale because she initially right. clicked on my link and that's what the cash is. That's, that's what happens. So yeah, inadvertently people may be using somebody's link but intending to support somebody else, right. but it's, it's sort of a messy game. That's just how it works. So 
part of the strategy by these people putting their links out there. Like as soon as that product drops and right. say, you'll click on my link. And then in two weeks from now, when you make that purchase, whether it's because of my video or because of somebody else's video, I get that money because you clicked on my link first. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, that's it. Yeah. That's, that's perfect. And I appreciate you taking a minute to kind of, um, expand on that and, and, and educate those who don't already know. Um, so that's why we're saying that it feels spammy. It feels kind of scummy. Um, right. and all of that to say, you know, there, you know, don't, you said it well, don't hate the player, hate the game. And that is, that is the nature of the game. I think this, I would just take this opportunity to make sure that, you know, when you're buying a product to try and make sure that you're giving credit to the creator that you would like to, right? Or the creator that could maybe use that money or whatever, right. or maybe they had a bigger influence on you making that purchase. Um, try to be deliberate and go into their website or go into their link tree on their Instagram and clicking on their link to to make your purchase. Um, I haven't always been good about that, but I've tried, especially in the last couple of years to really be intentional right. about how yeah. I approach, approach my purchases. Um, and the companies are paying attention to this stuff too. So like the companies are sending out free equipment to content creators or they're giving content creators a, a discount or whatever. And so they're tracking this and they're saying, oh, this guy is bringing this much traffic to our website. And, you know, we sent this person something and it's not really coming, you know, nothing's, nothing's coming oh, out of it. So it that. may, it may impact their relationships. I know that, well, I won't, I won't drop any names, but I know from, from our side, I know that the, the, the manufacturers pay attention to that stuff. And it, huh. it probably like makes a difference on who they're willing to work with, who they're going to send free stuff out to, who they're not going to send free stuff out to. Mm. So, I mean, it all, it all, I don't know. I think it makes the purchasing process cumbersome. I, when I bought my Mars bar, I remember I bought it and I was so stoked. And you're like, whose link did you use? And I was like, oh man, <laughs> me of all people, I should have remembered to use a fucking affiliate link. And I totally yeah. forgot. Um, but it's like, it's, I don't know, it's kind of a pain in the butt. But the worst case scenario is like making that purchase and nobody gets credit for it because then the company right. just keeps that percentage that they would be paying out to somebody. So, yeah, I I hate it. I really I hate it all. I just wish there was like a fair way that everybody could do this and it could be, you know, this great utopia. We all have home gyms and everybody's happy, but that's yeah. not how it works. Yeah, that isn't how it works. And I think, you know, this reminds me, the speaking of, you know, affiliate link spamming, another kind of interesting piece of, I don't know, controversy in the home gym community that kind of bubbled up in the last week or two weeks was uh, Garage Gym Reviews and Coop. Mm -hmm. And they yeah. did, they did a best weight plates in 2024 video a couple weeks ago. And completely shunned uh, the strength co weight plates which right. have you know based off of his uh, a previous review from garage gym reviews and coop they love those plates they think they're great plates but when you watch that video from a week or two ago of like 2024's best weight plates every single one of the plates that were featured in that video have an affiliate program and they're all linked you know heavily in the summary of the YouTube video. And when you think from just from a content consumption perspective and the casual home gym shopper, right? They want to do a little bit of research before they pick what weight plates they're gonna gonna buy. They're gonna go into YouTube maybe or even do a Google search. And depending on their SEO, which I'm sure Garage Gym Reviews SEO is strong, uh, right. you're gonna find their video and you're gonna click on one of their affiliate links. And this is unconfirmed, but my opinion, my take on this is that they completely missed the strength co or, 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 um, failed to include the strength co in that video, because to my knowledge, the strength co doesn't have an affiliate program. And what was great was the way that the community came to support the strength co. If you read through the comments of that YouTube video, they got blasted. For yeah. not talking about the strength co plates so much so that yesterday, 
yeah, I think it was yesterday, Coop had to re release like an apology. He didn't have to, but he released like an apology video, essentially right. kind of uh, addressing addressing it. What did you? What was your uh, thoughts on that whole situation? So I missed this whole scandal when it came out. I didn't yeah. know about it until you put it in the show notes, and I was like, yeah. what? What is this? So in your notes, you said, what did you say? Strength Co. shunned, or Coop shunned Strength Co. So yeah. I was like, all right, man, I'm going to watch this video. I'm going to see some real shunning here. Yeah. And then like, like I saw Strength Co. plates in the B-roll, and I was like, Oh, are they I in the B-roll? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> okay. I don't see any shunning. And so then I was like, oh, he's going to talk some shit. He's going to say something like real bad about him. And then I finished the video and I was like, where? I don't understand like the shunning. So then I I looked at like the uh, the comments, the follow-up video by the Strength Co., the Massonomics response. And then I was like, oh, like I get it. He... He may have showed them in the B-roll, but he didn't mention them by name in the entire video. Um, so I could definitely see why people were like, bro, if you're if you're talking about plates, you're talking about home gym plates, like the strength go should definitely be in that list. And I watched yeah. his apology and it sounded legit to me. Like, you just forget. I don't know. I make videos and I'll spend weeks, like, you know, compiling notes and then I'll shoot it and then I'll release it. And then first comment, yo, bro, what about this? And I'm like, oh, man, like, I don't know how I didn't think about that. I was planning sure. on 1000 other things. It happens. I don't know if it's more nefarious, like they're not going to make money off of it. So why recommend something? I don't know about that. But I will say, and this is a tangent, I liked the apology video more than most of the other Garage Gym Reviews video, just because mm. he was real. A lot of it was yeah. off the cuff. He yeah. he was like a little vulnerable about like getting made fun of and stuff. And like, <laughs> yeah. I like that side of Coop. I thought that was, that was actually like one of my... Uh, one of the videos that I liked more than, you know, the years of other videos where it's all like, you know, uh, they put a lot of pr production value, a lot of preparation. I sort of like the off the cuff stuff. So that was like a side note. But I, I think that's a good point. I think it was it was kind of like, a, I don't know, maybe a little bit of a return to form of, mm -hmm. you know, garage gym reviews pre uh, pillar for acquisition of the entire brand and company, which is, oh, what, are, you know, what is this that you're talking about? Fill in the listeners, fill in the listeners. So for those of you guys who don't know, uh, I don't know, probably two years ago now, but at some point pillar Four media, uh, which is an advertising and marketing company that historically had made their revenue on mattresses and marketing and owning mattress companies acquired all of Garage Gym Reviews, their YouTube content, their Facebook group, and kudos to Coop. I'm sure Coop is sitting pretty. Guy probably yeah. never has to work a day in his life again. Um, but they acquired the entire brand, all of their assets, all of their revenue from YouTube, and the entire, you know, which, you know, if for those of you guys who didn't know, the Home Gym um, Facebook group was started by Coop and is pretty much the biggest home gym community on Facebook. Um, so pillar four media now owns all of that. And so and don't forget, you... don't forget the the website with the SEO that you were talking oh, about. Yeah. Yeah. The like review that, website. Yeah. That very valuable, all the links, all the articles that link to products that link to affiliate codes that funnel money back to them. Yeah. All of that was part of it. The entire package. Very, very, I'm sure he got a very lucrative deal because oh, yeah. garage gym reviews when it was purchased was worth a lot of money. Um, yes. And I'm sure they, and if you watch the, the quality of the videos dramatically increased after that. Like they have a warehouse now, they have a crew, yeah. they have multiple personalities that are on camera now. It's yes. not just Coop, but it's, you know, like, you know, a handful of, they got a DIY guy. I don't know why they didn't hit me up for that, but <laughs> you know. Well, okay. So that's interesting that you bring that up. So the, the rumor is that pillar four, I think, who knows, this is all hearsay, right? But the original plan from Pillar 4, from what I can gather, was to slowly phase Coop out. 
Mm -hmm. And I think maybe he didn't want to continue to do it. Or maybe he, you know, was like, Hey, I'm just going to take my, take my bag and run. Um, which props to him. He built a phenomenal community and he was the first one to do it and he did it well. Um, and what they were doing, if you, you can kind of go back in their video timeline on YouTube and they started bringing in some well-known athletes and big names like Jason Kalipa and stuff like that to do some review videos for them. And from what I understand, their viewership went like tanked, like mm -hmm. Coop. They didn't, maybe they didn't understand that Coop was a huge part of the brand, the appeal, the viewership, and they had to bring him back. I think they probably had to renegotiate the deal and be like, Hey man, let's get you back on the payroll because without you, this isn't making the money that we thought it was going to make. And so you can kind of see that in their videos, there was like a stint of time when they were featuring some athletes. I can only for some reason, remember Jason Kalipa and, uh, and then Coop was kind of back full time doing the major, the vast majority of mm. their content on YouTube. Yeah. So something that sort of goes along with this and our previous topic, I don't know how much you've experienced, but judging by how much of this content I've seen on YouTube and Instagram, it feels like it's pretty pervasive, but I get contacted by Chinese equipment manufacturers on the daily, like review our new all-in-one machine, review our, uh, our banded. I just got one yesterday that was like a wall mounted functional trainer that uses band resistance only. I was like, ah, oh, that was so close to being a cool product. Anyway, like I, I, I get band resistance. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like do, do a, a wall mounted functional trainer that's plate loaded. I actually did write them back and said that, um, just was like, you know, I can't do it with the bands. It's so close to being a good product. Make a version yeah. with, with weight holders and I'll, I'll totally take one for free. But anyway, get bombarded with emails from companies and they're, they're 90, 95% of them are Chinese manufacturers that want their products in the home gym in the U S home gym market. Cause they see it's a very valuable market. So they're trying to just flood the U S market with their equipment and they offer it for free. Some offer to pay. Um, I'm kind of like, I, I turned down, most of them, I've said yes to a couple when I was like on hard times and I needed the money. So I just did the review and sold the equipment like right after that. Right. But how do you feel about that? Or what's your experience with it? So I've had a couple. Um, I don't think to the to the volume that you have talked about now and in other conversations that we've had. Um, but I have to your to your actual question, I have had a couple of companies reach out to me. They always they always get stuck in the spam, like the request inbox, you know, and mm -hmm. I have to, you know, go float over there and see what it is. But I recently had one from a company that was asking me to review something that another manufacturer has already created. They were the first to market with it. They're friends of mine, and it was an exact replica of their product. And I'm, I'm, I don't know. Like I, it was a moment where I thought like, thankfully it was like not a very expensive product. I don't know if, he, if they came at me with some like sweet functional trainer or something, I might've had a different response, but, um, I, I hit him back and I was just like, Hey, you know, this is actually, uh, an exact dupe of a product that one of my friends brought to market first. So it's probably not a good fit for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you know, feel free to keep me in mind for, you know, future products. So, I thought I handled that about as uh, diplomatically as, as you possibly can. The the guy responded and thanked me for my reply and said that they would keep me in mind. Going back to like all these, these Chinese manufacturers that are trying to come into the U.S. market, there's a lot yeah. of them and they're making like they're making racks, they're making bars, they're making plates, yeah. they're making like the uh, the seal row that I currently still have, the uh, the chest fly machine that I got rid of, I got a leg press. They're like trying to make home gym equipment, like not commercial grade, you know, just this a slight step down to make it affordable and easy to ship or whatever. and they're they're doing so in a way that they're just sort of flooding the market. I think it's not good for U.S. manufacturers in the long term because mm. 
most things made in China can be made for cheaper than oh, yeah. the U.S. products. So I am I'm personally conflicted about it. Like, I don't want to support these companies and encourage these companies. But again, it goes back to like the affiliate conversation where sometimes we got to do what we got to do to make money and survive. If I if I can't keep doing this, like it doesn't matter where my morals are. I can't afford to keep making videos for free. So, sure. uh, so there's, there's kind of a balance. Um, I am say, I have said no to the majority of these companies. Um, I'm not in a place right now where I have to say yes to any of these. So I'm being real selective. And, and then like to the other point you made, I've seen a bunch where they're a blatant ripoff of, a U.S. company, or I even had a company hit me up that ripped me off. Like, I don't even <laughs> think they realized what they're asking or like, you yeah. know, who they're talking to. Yeah. Um, there's a company and I don't want to name them um, because I don't want to give them any more recognition, but <clears throat> I've been seeing their ads everywhere. Um, and not only did they make, uh, so one of the products that they make is a leg extension that fits onto like a rack upright, strikingly similar to the one, uh, Porter Phys Ed made, like they didn't come up with this in a vacuum. Like they, they saw this dude's post either, you know, they follow me or, or they follow him something like you see this thing and it's like, obviously that's what it is. Like the, the cable connects to the leg extension. Like it's, it's obviously his. And I saw it in an ad and I saw that and I was like, Oh, and I'm scrolling through the carousel. And then I saw like fully articulating, uh, jammer arms. Not like I'm the first person to ever come up with that, but like, it seems strikingly similar to the, the adapter mechanism to give them the full range of motion. There are different ways to do it. And the way right. that they did it was similar to the way that I have partnered with Jinpin to do. So when they hit me up and they're like, Oh, can we send you some of our equipment for a review? Um, I was just like, man, that's crazy. I didn't even respond, but that's, that's kind of messed up. Yeah. I think that their, their, you know, their approach is usually like ready, fire, aim, you know, like I don't yeah. I didn't get into this, but, you know, outside of the home gym um, manufacturers out of China that will reach out to me in the DMs, I get a dozen a week from sunglass manufacturers and other yeah. weird stuff that has nothing to do with my content, which, right. you know, just shows you that they're not, they're not paying attention. It's just a, a spray and pray type right. of approach. Yeah. But I think that this kind of surfaces something else that I wanted to talk about, which is maybe not so much these smaller out of China. Uh, I mean, it has, it has to do with it, but like a lot of these products that we're seeing, I think that like Prime Fitness has dealt with this a lot. I think that uh, if you think about like Bolt Fitness out of Houston, they're doing this where they're basically duplicating well-known American made products out of China or even just like straight up purchasing them off of Alibaba. And, you know, there's a couple of different ways that you can go about this. You could, as a home gym owner, you could either buy from a company like Bolt, who's based in the US, but is just kind of knocking off a lot of products that have existed or are well known and they're manufacturing them out of China. Or you can just go on Alibaba yourself. And I don't know if you've ever done this. You can search for like the US name of the product with the company of, and it'll, it'll come up on Alibaba. Wow. Like their, their duplication of it at fractions yeah. of the price. And I'm guilty. You know, I've bought some stuff off of Amazon, smaller stuff that are, that are knockoffs of mm -hmm. other well-known products. And, and I, uh, I think, you know, the, the, the spirit that I have would be to want to support the, the originators. But I think that what happens is like my desire just to have that product in my space at a third of the cost, uh, will outweigh and I'll give in. Um, but I'm just curious, like, what are your thoughts on like the Alibaba dupes that you can get for way, 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 way cheaper? than, you know, supporting the American companies um, 
or, you know, I think for, for you and I, it's, it comes down to like supporting the relationships that we have right. too, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's the, it's like, it's the American system, dude. I mean, it's not even just the American system, but we live in a free market capitalist system where mm. you can do that. Like if, if somebody doesn't have a patent on a design, then anybody else can come in and make that same exact thing. And it, is frowned upon in the in the tight knit home gym community, but it's not illegal, and people are free to do it. It sucks. I don't like it, but we're working within the the confines of you know our society, and that's that's just the reality of the situation. And a lot of people, when they're building a home gym, they don't have the money for every single premium item that they want to get. So you sort of have to pick and choose like what's worth spending and, and getting the, the, the premium stuff. And, and what am I going to cheap out on and get the cheap Chinese version? I mean, I, again, I'm on both sides of it. Like I, so I made the, with Jim pin, I made the belt squat collar and um, we just started selling them on Amazon. I had somebody hit me up, say, Hey, what's the Amazon link? And I searched it on Amazon and I saw the Chinese knockoff before I saw the gym pin version. And I was like, what the hell? And it is literally half the price. And, and I sent it to send the link to gym pin. I was like, bro, what the fuck? Like this sucks, but there's nothing that we can do. Right. Nobody's breaking any laws. And ultimately the consumer decides what they want to do. So, I mean, it is what it is, man. What are you going to do? You can't bitch about it. I mean, you yeah. can't bitch about it, but you're not going to change it. I mean, as, as a person with money to purchase these things, it's up to me to, put my money into the companies that I want to support. Yeah, it's difficult. It's a difficult position to be in. You know, like I said, um, the desire, the willingness to support these, you know, uh, the original creators is there, but the, the checking account doesn't always support that desire to do right. that. Um, well, and it also takes work. So like, you know, say I'm just a person who goes on Amazon and I want to do belt squats in a, a better way or whatever. Like, yeah. I don't know the backstory. I don't know who came no. up with it first. I see listings and I, you know, I look at the reviews and stuff and I'm, I'm making a decision based on what's there in the moment. Like it, it's really just a handful of niche freaking people that know what products are tied to what people and what companies. And like, it takes a lot of time and effort to do research, to like support. Yeah. Most people are just like, you know, they're, they're busy, they're working. They can barely have, make the time to work out. Like they just, they don't care uh, or they don't have time to like put the energy into figuring it out. So I don't know. I don't blame That's anybody. Accurate. No, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I was just curious to get your your take on that. I think um, like a recent admission that I will make is, uh, have you seen those Aleco, their open collars, like the C clamping collars that just kind of go on and you don't have to slide them over the whole sleeve? Yeah. Um, what are they, like $110 plus shipping for those collars or something? Right. There's a version you can get on Amazon. Uh, called the Kepi, uh, I think they're called oh. the Kepi Oppen collars or whatever. Yeah, they retail yeah. for forty nine ninety nine, but in the last couple of weeks, they've flash sailed them down to around twenty or thirty dollars, depending on the day. Mm -hmm. and I jumped. I went right. after. I was like, "Hey, why yeah. not?" Like, "Hey, I mean, I'll go ahead and get those." Now, I don't have any personal relationships with uh, Aleko, but um, you know, I guess I'm just kind of fessing up that yeah, was a recent yeah. decision that I made to uh, <laughs> not support the originators. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think that, I, I think that most people listening have probably done this in one area or another. Like sure. they may be a home gym purist, but they've done this with electronics or they've done this with, you know, like household items. There, there are no shortage of cheap alternatives that you can purchase on Amazon. You can purchase at Walmart. You can purchase at Target. Like that's just, that's, that is the, 
the nature of the, the society we live in is all this stuff is available and you spend your money on what you decide is like the best thing to spend your money on. I don't know, man. That's true. Don't feel bad about it. It's all good. I don't. I, don't. I like those colors a lot. And even if even if you bought a knockoff of my product, I would still forgive you, man. <laughs> That's all good. That's like to think if I actually have. I don't think I have. Nah. <laughs> I, it's only a matter of time before, like the the fringe sport mammoth belt squat is going to get knocked off, like because it it's so has been. ah shit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. See, so I don't even know, man. Damn yeah, it. Yeah, already has been. Uh, yeah, I saw it the other day. Um, I did see. Let's let's actually go into that. So, I know that you wanted to talk about the mammoth belt squat kickstand. Yeah. Uh, we have that in the show notes, but yeah, I saw. I think it was on the home gym facebook group somebody shared that they had bought both of them like they they owned the mammoth i think mm -hmm. and then they were just curious about the one on amazon because mm -hmm. of course it's got free return so right he bought it and they use like a a lower grade of steel and he was, he was really you know it, it, he leaned in the favor of you and fringe sports that it was right, definitely nice. like the inferior product but uh -huh. that was how I discovered that oh. uh, that Damn. your your belt squat is has been has been duped. But of course, like I'm still I'm still trying to make mine work. <laughs> you know, so right. that's well, I was like, you oh, got you got bits and pieces. Get, I did get bits and pieces. Yeah, yeah. I, I so did. when you come to my house, I have more bits and pieces to give you that will. Okay. You know, I don't want to weigh your suitcase down with the whole thing, but like I. <laughs> I have several prototypes. I can I can give you something, but okay. since we are talking about it, um, yeah. I have been working closely with Fringe. I talk to them on the phone pretty frequently, and a big point of contention is that on Black Friday they announced the kickstands were going to be available for pre-order. They were supposed to ship. I don't even know when. Supposed to ship by January or something. Okay. They okay. still haven't shipped. People oh, are pissed. I didn't know that. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, it's bad. It's another, uh, this is for our tea section. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, people are pissed, man. And like, I totally get it. Thankfully, people are mad at me because I have no control over the situation at all. Like, I'm waiting on mine also. Um, but yeah, people are like, you know, they paid way back when they paid on black Friday. It was, was the, like the big special and, uh, people haven't gotten them yet. So rightly so, but here's the update. They are like arriving soon. I believe they are in the warehouse either now or within the next week. I think when I talked to fringe last week, like they hadn't quite arrived yet, but they were like, supposed to arrive very, very soon. So they should be in the US very soon. They should be in the warehouse soon and they will start shipping out immediately. As soon as they do, I'll make a video and post a video about it just so everybody knows like, hey, these are here, these are ready, these are done. Um, but yeah, sorry for the drama. Hopefully it's gonna be well worth it. I haven't even tried them out or tested them out. Um, I saw the video that Peter posted just like everybody else. But um, yeah, I. I'm very excited to finally get them as well. Was are you referring to the video announcing like when they originally like went up for sale or did did Peter post an update video about them not having no, them it's, in the time? No, promise? he basically he posted a video. He got he got kind of roasted in the comments cuz he was at the factory in China. He was wearing like leather shoes and jeans and he was testing out the kickstand, but everybody's like, why are you belt squatting in fancy shoes and jeans? And it was like, you know, I've been there. Like you just, you're, you're going about your day-to-day -day business. And then sure. I don't know, I'll be like, Oh, I need to shoot a video real quick. And then people are yeah. like, why are you lifting in jeans? But, um, yeah, anyway, it was kind of funny, but going back to what brought this whole thing up as he had originally posted a video of the final prototype of the kickstand and fringe posted that on Instagram. And then it's on the, the mammoth belt squat, like product page. Now, if okay. you want to see the video I'm talking about, um, but yeah, those are, those are coming. I also, so I didn't tell fringe about this and if they're listening surprise, but 
So I work with Jim Pan, and Jim Pan has kind of a competing product. It's the one that they did. Uh, they partnered with Curls in the Rack to make like a sort of kickstand thing. Oh, I remember that. that. Works yeah. with lever arms. So like I was on a call with them last week. And they asked if I want one, and I was like, whoa, bros, I don't know if you know, but we're kind of, uh, there's a conflict of interest. And they were like, you know, we're, bring it on. Like, we're happy to have you test our product and test your product and, like, you know, do a comparison, see what you like, and make a video about it. And if you like yours better, like, say it. That's fine. So I'm going to get my hands on one of those as well. Um, which is something that I really like about Jim Pan and was something else I put on the show notes that I don't know if you want to talk about, but the whole, like, they have a bar that's very similar to nothing I've ever seen before. And I have no idea what, what I was going to say. So I'm just going to skip. No, that. let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. <laughs> well, you made a face, bro. No, cause I knew where you were going. Cause you, I knew oh, okay. where you were going. my face wasn't to deter you from continuing <laughs> on the, on the path. I was just, um, getting emotionally ready to you okay. know, defend the honor of the people I care about. Yeah. You know? <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not on the attack, bro. So no, like, don't you don't have to either. defend on my account. <laughs> no. So like when we talked about that, that sort of segued into talking about the, the Darko bar and then Jim pin coming out with a bar that was very, very similar and how that sort of led to a lot of consternation in the discord group. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, and, I just, I thought it was really interesting. I do think Jim Pin's approach is really interesting. Like their story is they didn't know that the Darko bar existed. They had a bar that was long already. They put a big hole in the middle and basically just modified one of their bars, um, not intending to step on anyone's toes, but basically iterating on a product that they already had. Um, it was afterwards they found out about the Darko bar. This is their story. I can't right. vouch for the validity either way, but I sure. um, found out about it and, um, basically had a back and forth with the community in the discord. Um, and so they, they off, they also offered to send me one of those and said, I should compare it to the Darko bar. I was like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tread on those waters. I'll compare it with like the, you know, their product that the fringe sport thing, something I'm involved with, but I don't, send I don't want to step me. on, I'll I don't want to step on any toes. Okay. You do that. Um, <laughs> But uh, I just I think that approach is interesting and I like it that they're instead of, you know, they could have been like, oh, we we don't care. And we did it first or, you know, you know, they could have had a number of reactions, but mm. it seems like their reaction was like, bring it on. We're happy to talk about it. Let's let's discuss this and and just sort of go from there. So what's your take? So I was, this happened a while ago. I was on the discord when that product was announced and, and, um, Jim pin, the representative, I can't remember his name was popped on ben. the discord, Ben. Okay. Yeah. And, and watched him proceed to get roasted by the home gym community and rightfully so. I mean, so if, if you don't already know this, like Darko. Darko was very active in the home gym discord, um, long before he started his company and a lot of, uh, a lot of input was given to him by the discord and a lion share of, I don't know if lion share, I might be overstating, but like the discord has supported his business growth, right? Like they know that he's from there. He's a, he's, he'll, he'll even say this, he's a discord member first. And he supports and takes care of people on the discord. He offers his blemishes up and always does like, um, unique sales for discord members on his products. You know, he really tries to give back to the community that helped birth his company. And so they defended him, you know, very, very, uh, I don't know if aggressive is the right word, but very actively defended him mm -hmm. to Ben. And it was hard there's a couple of perspectives here. Like it's hard for, it's hard to have an, I don't know. Let's see. It's hard to take a side here r diplomatically or pragmatically because, you know, Darko is a friend of mine and, uh, I've been to his house. We've hung out. 
uh, we've had conversations. And so, you know, I want to defend my friend and be like, what, yeah, 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 Jim Pan, what are you guys doing? You just copied his product, right? It's not mm -hmm. patented, right? Like it's fair game. And at the same time, like Darko Shorty and Longy Bars are kind of an iteration on Jim Pin's original, uh, what do they even call that bar? The D bar? I think uh, called the yeah, D -bar. the long, yeah the, yeah, the D handle bar, yeah. The D handle bar, right? Yeah. That said, it's difficult for me to believe that Ben and the Jim Pin team had never seen Darko Shorty or Longy Bars because Basement Brandon has been a great ally to Darko and immediately posts reviews. As soon as Darko uh, gets him one to take a look at, Brandon has posted a YouTube video and it, it would be hard for me to believe that they didn't see that mm -hmm. because Brandon is the an OG content creator in this space. And I think that pretty much any company or individual who wants to make waves within the home gym space or just the fitness space in general is somehow like in, in, in his, in Brandon's wake, like they they follow him somewhere. So mm -hmm. it's hard for me to believe, as you said, their story is that they had never seen it before. It's hard for me to believe that. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way to really prove or disprove, so yeah. I guess we just leave it at that. They're but, not coming to Home Gym Con, are they? Yeah, they're not going to be able to make it. No, <laughs> okay. that's a long, that's a long flight. Yeah, but Overseas. they are growing. I, I am. I don't know if anybody cares, but I caught up with them recently, and I hadn't uh, had really any sort of conversation with them for the last six months or so and uh when they said they wanted to get a hold of me and like chat i was thinking like oh things aren't going well they want to end this partnership or whatever and it ended up being actually the opposite that like they're they're growing they added another full-time staff member they've moved to a bigger warehouse they're working on having more inventory on hand rather than made to order so all all good stuff from that aspect but uh, yeah, I I have nothing but good things to say yeah. about my friends at Jim Pin and also my friend at Darko <laughs> Lifting. I love okay. everybody. Yeah, no, same. You know, like, and I think, you know, that's why I, I don't try to take hard stances here. Like, you know, the controversy and the tea and the drama of it all is just fun to talk about. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, though, and we talked about this in the last podcast, like, these are people, they're human beings. You know, a lot of them we will meet and interact with at home Gym Con. I'm not trying to get all aggro and pick a fight or anything <laughs> like that. Uh, yeah. 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 So that's, that, that is, that is interesting. Hey, speaking of equipment and people and stuff that's going to be yeah. at home gym con, there've been some uh, new equipment purchases happening lately. Yeah. Hey, what you got, bro? Yeah. Tell me. Small so, stuff. Sh show me mine. I'll show you yours. No, wait. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wait a second. Um, little stuff, you know, like little, little purchases. I'm out of space. I've talked about this before. Yeah. Um, but let's see. So I did pick up some stray dog alpha rollers. Those are just leg rollers uh that pretty much everybody has a version of them rogue does rep does everybody has has rack mounted leg rollers but yeah. um stray dog kind of i think you know for those that don't know is kind of like got the uh what would you call it like the best in class okay. version of the leg rollers they're they're bigger they're longer they're better uh, and they have color <laughs> options versus yeah, just a, cool. a, a black. Yeah. So um, I picked up a couple in purple, but it's nice. Like to, they give me a lot of, like, yeah, I can do sissy squats with them. I have like a way, a much better way to uh, um, hold myself down. Like when I'm doing lat pull downs before I was <laughs> just using like a two by four with some, oh, some yeah. uh, foam insulation on it. Yeah. And you know, these are nice cause I can like roll under them. So I got those really happy with that purchase. Uh, I bought spot grips not too long ago. I taught, I made a post about those, but those are like dumbbell spotters. They're fantastic. Really yeah. expensive at like $500. 
I didn't pay that much for them because I bought them secondhand. But in which my ones opinion, are those? The ones that like have the, on the belt? The, yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen those. Yeah, yeah. that's cool, man. They're, they're how much you get them like for? Less than five hundred. Okay, is there I a reason got... you you're being uh, coy about this? <laughs> no, no, no. Well. No, not really. I got them for like two hundred bucks. Sweet, dude. Plus shipping. Yeah, yeah. I had to buy my my buddy had to ship them from across the United States, but really good purchase. I have I have like weird shoulder stuff, and you know the lift offs. I was I'm doing a lot of dumbbell work and mm -hmm. heavy dumbbell lift offs and stuff, and getting them into position is risky for me uh and so i i really kind of picked them up for that but the fact that you can just like leave them hanging right over <laughs> you and start from the top position like you can with yeah. a barbell when you're barbell bench pressing or something um yeah. they are they're delightful i like them That's cool. a lot yeah i don't know if i tell people to go spend 500 dollars on them but i like them a lot um yeah, little stuff. I upgraded my Rogue Multi Belt for belt squats to the Spud Ink Pillow Belt, which Ooh. is they worked with Brian Hennessy uh, actually oh, nice. to kind of to like iterate on his Henny Belt design. Which I think yeah. do you have a Henny Belt? I, feel like I do. Yeah. A Henny belt. yeah, yeah. Great belt. I used it at Home Gym Con last year. I was just going to buy a Henny Belt, uh, but I heard from from the homies on the Discord that the Spud Ink Pillow Belt was like just just a couple points better nice. than, than the Henny belt. So I, I grabbed that. Um, yeah. But what have you got? I heard you got some, some new stuff as well. Yeah. So I, I know like I, I've gone on and on in these last couple episodes about how I have enough stuff. I don't need anything else. I'm spoiled, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's for new things, like bringing in new things that don't have room. But what I do have room for is getting rid of old stuff and upgrading to newer stuff. So okay. I'm in the process of getting rid of my rep dumbbells. And if you recall, I'm sure you were there. I, I put, uh, I put you in the video or your, yeah. your comment, yeah. but, um, and two years ago I got these rep dumbbells on marketplace and they're all hazy like they just looked yeah. messed up and bad and i made a whole video around like how do we how do we turn rubber dumbbells that look like this into you know nice new looking dumbbells and i tried a handful of things anyway i tried Cerakote wipes and they worked wonderfully and i never made a follow-up video even though i promised i would but two years later i've never had to touch up the Cerakote. they still look great oh okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i'm actually so and then i did just get a full set of the fringe sports silverback dumbbells that they've been teasing on their instagram oh uh, is that their, a new product for them yeah yeah they're oh, brand new i didn't know that okay yeah so they are fully knurled rubber dumbbells um they're i don't know if they're hexagon i don't know if they're six-sided or five-sided i haven't counted the sides but they're beautiful they're really really cool they are fully knurled they do have uh like a rubber coating on the knurl so oh, there's like a, a positive and a negative to it like the positive is it's extra grip because it's rubbery and it's grippy the negative is it takes away some of the bite from the knurl um, yeah. i still i still really like them um another thing that i really like about them is that the handle is I don't know, probably like a half an inch longer maybe an inch longer i haven't measured it but like there's in the rep yeah 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 oh, so there's more okay. room for something like micro gains in there yeah. like on the rep ones put micro gains on there and it was like just just a tight squeeze to get the hand and i have small yeah. hands so like i can't imagine you know what what some of those real men feel like when they're doing those uh Dumbbells. I know what you mean. No, it's fun. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're awesome. Good. I so okay. So I did see you post a picture of those. Or did you did you post that or did you send it? Yeah, to yeah. Me? It you was uh, it? Okay. no, it was a story. Yeah. Okay. And I thought I'm like, oh, they're the rubber coated ones. Now, the the one thing that I've heard about, like, well, you're more like rep the rep rubber coated dumbbells. Um, they're they have a shorter handle. Uh -huh. And like, I, I was talking to man who parks in the gym because as a kind of a callback, man who parks in the gym bought spot grips after seeing my, uh, my Instagram reel talking about how much I liked the spot grips. 
he went out and bought a pair only to discover that his rubber coated rep dumbbells are too short oh, to no. kind of fit into the holster for the spot grips. So he wound up having to send those back or he resold them. I'm not sure what he did. Um, but he said that he bought the rubber handled ones intentionally because it's a smaller form factor, right? Like you're keeping the weight in closer to you. But it's funny that you mentioned that the micro gains don't like play well with the the rep fully knurled because I've had the rep, I've had two pair. I had a pair of the rep fully knurled dumbbells and I had a pair of giant fully knurled dumbbells, which are kind of the same thing. Uh, I mm -hmm. do like the giants a little bit more, but as far as like the handle length, it was the same. And when I put my micro gains on there, it would, it would definitely pinch my hands. And I told Mike over at micro gains, I was like, man, these are, these are a little tight. But when I upgraded to those American barbell 10 sided, they have a longer handle. Yeah. So I know nice. what you mean that it's yeah. really much, much nicer for the yeah. micro gains plates. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a subtle difference, but yeah, it makes, it does make a huge difference when you're doing something like that. Like if you're just yeah. using them as they're made and you're not adding micro gains to them, I don't imagine that that would be an issue, but, uh, well, here's yeah. a question. So sure. most of the time, I think one of the biggest selling points of the rubber coated handles is it helps with the colder temperatures, right? For people who don't want to touch like the freezing cold handle, it kind of neutralizes mm -hmm. that a little bit, but you're a basement dweller, climate controlled basement yeah. dweller. Are you thinking yeah. about like doing some garage or outdoor training with these dumbbells? Like what's no. going on? <laughs> no, no. I just, honestly, I just like the, the dumbbells or like the look of them. I like yeah. that, you know, they're, they're slightly longer, slightly, you know, going to be more comfortable with the accessories. Um, I'm also, to be completely honest, I just like upgrading things, even if I don't need to upgrade them. Like I've had these other dumbbells for two yeah. and a half years. Like yeah. I could, I could use a change, um, for purely aesthetic reasons, the fringe ones look better on camera because they oh, have like yeah. their fluorescent green. They just look cool. Um, yeah. So it's not all about like what's best for my workout needs. It's also <laughs> just like they look cool in the background. And I don't know. It's silly. It's dumb. It's but not, I will I freely it. admit that. Yeah. No, I'm glad you brought that up because when I brought in those American barbell dumbbells and replaced my, my giant lifting fully knurled straight handle ones, I was shocked. Like I was like, "Holy cow! This is like an aesthetic upgrade for the yeah, gym." Like, they yeah, look they look slick, so dude. Much better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So weird. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, I totally get that, but it's 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 a little sad, you know, because there's so much history with you and those those rep dumbbells that you had to figure out how to restore. Uh, have you listed them? Are you going to post yeah. them for, oh, I, for a guy, yeah. I got a guy coming to pick them up tomorrow. Yeah. Nice. How much you sell yeah. them for? 800. Per pound. Uh, for so, five to 50 or five to a hundred? It's five to 50. Oh, okay. Okay. That's yeah, not bad. Yeah. That's, yeah. You're doing good on those. Yeah. 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 I think I got them for about the same and used them for two years. Yeah. Um, the I've, I've had them listed for about two weeks and mm -hmm. I kept getting low ball offers. And finally I got, I got somebody that's driving two hours each way to come get them. Oh, wow. I have to come home on my lunch break and meet them tomorrow, but totally worth it, man. You're not going to just do a, a door pickup? Not with dumbbells, bro. <laughs> no way. I live in the city now, man. Like, hey, you're I live, the one who was saying that's what you do. Like porch pickup. I will. Porch pick I will. Yeah, that yeah. was when I lived in the suburbs, bro. I'm not oh, doing that okay. with the set of dumbbells in the yeah. city. That's crazy. That would now be. Gonna, no, yeah, those would be jacked for sure. For sure. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, Home Gym Con is coming up. We've got another podcast that we're going to be releasing, uh, kind of like right before it, right? Like, mm -hmm. is that kind of the plan? Yeah, I think we'll probably do one right before, right after, because we're going to be so amped both okay. before and after. But uh -huh. I did talk to Jake about possibly doing a live episode at Home Gym Con. So Whoa. I know I didn't, I didn't watch I, the F out, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, in Massonomics, if you want to join up and we could do That'd a mega cool. episode, but uh, yeah, I told Jake, we'd be down to do it. I don't know okay, any of the logistics, when, yeah. what, 
Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll work that out. So anybody who's going, if you're going to be there, uh, and you want to catch it, come s talk to us. I don't know. So we don't know where we're going to do it yet. I know. I don't know. Thursday, Friday. Um, also Gluck is going to be there. Don't know if you saw the I, news. I did. I did see that. Yeah, that'll be cool. I'm glad that there's just, I, I'm glad that there are more content creators coming to yeah. support Jake and what he's doing. Um, yeah, that's going to be sweet. Speaking of the Arnold, and maybe we can like use this as like a cliffhanger. Did you mm -hmm. hear that Rep Fitness was banned from the Arnold for one year? I did hear about oh, that. Oh, yeah. you did. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So there's some tea that we didn't talk about, but I just yeah. learned that this week. Oh, uh, that was damn. Yeah. 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 That's funny. Yeah, it's a funny yeah. story. So tune it in is. next time to hear the backstory on yeah. why Rep was not allowed to go to the Arnold this current year. Tisk tisk. Love yeah. your fitness. Uh, yeah. We'll see you at home, Jim Con. <laughs>